Good morning. I am Pastor Jen. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to those of you who are with us online. A special welcome to Pastor Cliff Gerber, who is here. He's worshiping with us, but also will be speaking as part of our RIC speaker series. So between the services, you are invited to join in the Sunday School Room for further conversation. I invite you to stand as you're able as we begin with our gathering hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, number 789 in your red hymnals. <laughs> in the name of God, the Creator, Savior, and Spirit. Amen. In the waters of baptism, we receive God's love and forgiveness and are forever connected to Christ. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. At the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the waters, your word calling out into the deep and creating everything there is. Your spirit continues to move through the story of your people, crossing the Red Sea with Moses and the Israelites, delivering them into safety, sweeping across the lands in the great flood, making way for a new beginning when all seemed lost, washing over us in the waters of baptism, making us new. In these waters, we hear God proclaim, you are my beloved, and that is our truth forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, your followers gave to your children something more powerful and more valuable than riches. They gave healing and hope. 
bring healing and hope into our world, and show us evidence of your presence in our lives. Amen. You may be seated. The reading is from Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. A reading from Acts. Peter and John were going up to the temple at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the established prayer time. Meanwhile, a man crippled since birth was being carried in. Every day, people would place him at the temple gate, known as the beautiful gate, so he could ask for money from, these, from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he began to ask them for a gift. Peter and John stared at him. Peter said, look at us. So the man gazed at them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I don't have any money, but I will give you what I do have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise up and walk. Then he grasped the man's right hand and raised him up. At once his feet and ankles became strong. Jumping up, he began to walk around. He entered the, table with, the temple with them, walking, leaping, and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. They recognized him as the same one who used to sit at the temple's beautiful gate asking for money. They were filled with amazement and surprise at what had happened to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite children to come forward. Good morning. Thank you, Lainey. I think you'll be our representative today. <laughs> So I do have my box, and I'm going to open the cover this time. And actually, I am going to invite others to take part, too. I'm going to show the, what's in here. Lainey will tell us what's in here first. What do you see in the box? Uh, uh, paper clip, scissors. So there's a paper clip, scissors, pen. a pen, Earphone. headphones, yeah, earphones, <gasps> earbuds. And a calculator. Did everybody hear that? So a paper clip, a pen, a pair of scissors, earbuds, and a calculator. I'm going to invite Lainey to take one away. And then I'm going to ask you which one of those isn't in the box anymore. So Lainey will, will hide it a little bit. Yeah. OK. So in the box now, we have scissors, earbuds, a pen, and a calculator. What's missing? Paper clip, they're pretty good at this. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> you put that back and take something else out. Okay, so in our box now we have a paper clip, earbuds, calculator, and scissors. What's missing? The pen. Fewer people got it that time, I just want to say. <laughs> and thank you, Lainey. So the reading that we just heard, and I'm going to talk about a little bit more, is it's really hard to pay attention and really notice things, right? And you may have played this game at parties or something in the past, right? But oftentimes, we don't pay as close attention as we could, especially to people. And so I'm going to talk more about how the man who was sitting outside of the temple, what Peter and John did is they noticed him. They saw him. And what a gift that is. Let's fold our hands and say a prayer. Dear God, we ask that you help us to pay attention, especially to the people that are around us. Amen. And we have Sunday school and nursery. All are staying here. All are welcome. I'm inviting you to stand as you're able as we sing verse 3 of number 376. <laughs>
according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples had crossed the lake, they landed at Gennesaret, anchored the boat, and came ashore. People immediately recognized Jesus and ran around that whole region, bringing sick people on their mats to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he went, villages, cities, or farming communities, they would place the sick in the marketplaces and beg him to allow them to touch even the hem of his clothing. Everyone who touched him was healed. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. One of our members, Rita Colombo, gave me permission to share this with you this morning. It's just a beautiful response that I've heard her say. So some of you know that she's been ill for several months and hasn't been able to be here in person until Easter Sunday. And she came to church, and it was the first time, I think, since before Christmas. And I said to Rita, Rita, how good it is to see you. And she responded, it's good to be seen. <laughs> it's good to be seen. It is good to be seen, isn't it? I realized that that is not the first time that I heard her say that. And I'm not sure exactly when she started to use the phrase. Maybe it was in more recent years. As we get older, I've heard people say that I don't feel like people see me as much as they did before. I don't feel like they've noticed me as much as they used to. Sometimes women or younger people or people of color tell us when I have an idea at work, it isn't always recognized. It isn't always seen when it comes from me. But when it comes from someone else, sometimes people think it's a great idea. What's up with that? It's good to be seen. And most people want to be seen. When I lived in Seattle, there was an overnight shelter at the church in which I served. And in talking to one of the men there, he said, you know, I don't mind when I'm outside and I'm holding a cup and people don't put any money into it. He said, but couldn't they at least say good morning? Couldn't they see me as a human being? It's good to be seen. In today's reading from the book of Acts, Jesus' disciples, Peter and John, are filled with the Holy Spirit. And they have to know what to do next, right? How will they continue Jesus' ministry when he's no longer there with him as he, they, as he used to be? During this time in Jewish history, there were two daily prayer times. There was a morning time and an afternoon time. And faithful Jews would go to the temple during those times, and there would be prayers and some sort of animal sacrifice as a form of worship. So on this day, Peter and John go to the temple for the afternoon prayer time called Misna. But before they get there, before they walk through the gate of the temple, they pass a man who is sitting at the entrance. He's unable to walk and has been carried there by some friends. Now this scenario sounds a little bit familiar, doesn't it? There was another man who couldn't walk, who had some friends, who carried their friend down to Jesus through the roof. Extreme lengths to get their friend to see Jesus. So think about the friends of this man. We're told they do this every day. Every day, these friends go to this man's house. They pick him up and they carry him to the gate in front of the temple. And there he'd be for however long, waiting for people to put something into his cup. And then at the end of the day, those friends would pick him up again and carry him once again back home every day. 
it was the logical place for someone to come to ask for help. The prophets throughout scripture say that God doesn't want our worship, our prayers and sacrifices, if we ignore the people around us. So of course, by seeing a man in need, the people would give money knowing that that is worship. Before going into the temple, they are invited to see someone, to see the people, all the people. So Peter and John walk to the temple and they see the man. Now perhaps at first the man doesn't see them, or perhaps he feels some shame. It was an honor-shame culture, and those who were ill were not considered to be worthy of necessarily looking someone in the eye. But Peter and John aren't having any of that. They say to him, look at us. See us. Look, pay attention. We are all beloved children of God. The man looks up, and as they connect each other's eyes, they see each other as human beings, equal in the eyes of God, both with something to give the other. In a little over a month, 16 of us are traveling to the village of Rohanga. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that Ramson right, in Zimbabwe. Ramson grew up there in the village, and Faith Lutheran developed a relationship. I realized this week, it's 20 years this year, since 2004, Faith has had a relationship with this village in Wuhanga. And during this time, we purchased a grinding mill so that the women didn't have to spend half a day walking to get their corn ground. We've given things like school fees for children who otherwise wouldn't be able to go to the school. We've done building supplies and food, especially during the pandemic. But being separated for, for so many miles and knowing of the poverty in the village and never having been there ourselves for the most part, it's easy to think of the problems in the village, the problems in Zimbabwe and not the people. So what Ramson has said to us many times the most important thing we will do in the village is see the people. To notice them. To recognize them as individuals with different personalities, different gifts, different skills. To build relationships. To talk. To sing. Maybe to dance. I don't know. <laughs> it's good to be seen. All God's children want to be seen. This past Monday, our man served a meal at Bread and Roses in Lawrence. We learned that most of the people who come to Bread and Roses go through the takeout line, and they're given a meal to go, or meals to go to care for their families. But about 30 people decided that they would eat inside. And so they were invited inside to eat at tables with placemats and real silverware. As they came through the door and took their seats, our confirmands brought the meal to them, like at a restaurant, placed it, their plates, in front of them. That way, each person was seen individually. It's good to be seen. In his writings about the sacrament of Holy Communion, Martin Luther says that the most important words that we can hear at communion is that this gift of bread and wine, this gift of Jesus, is for you. God's love is for you. God's grace and forgiveness is for you. God's compassion and mercy is for you. You are seen at this table. So our challenge this day is after we rise and go out, that we see others, truly see them. It's good to be seen.
I invite you to stand as together we sing number 719 in your red hymnals. <laughs> confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from life, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, 
and all those in need of good news. O oh God, our Holy One, you feed our deepest hungers. As we share the holy meal that is the body and blood of Jesus given for us, lead us to share all that we have and find in generosity, abundant life, God of grace. O oh God, our creator, you bring forth all life on earth. Calm storms, bring water to parched places, and protect the climate that this planet would sustain life in all its variety. God of grace. O oh God, our Savior, you offer wisdom and guidance beyond all human knowledge. Instruct lawmakers, judges, and elected officials to make decisions grounded in your justice and care for all people. God of grace. O oh God, our elder, you care for all your children. Encourage those who are in times of transition, facing the loss of old ways and routines and anticipating change. Guide those who journey in grief, hope, and uncertainty. For Magali, Rita, Phil, Renita, Chris, Amy, and Ken, God of grace. O oh God, our center, you bring all people together in you. Help us to remember our identity and purpose in our ministry. Move us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to share in beloved community. God of grace. For the concerns and celebrations named by this community today, we pray for Marion Carp and family upon the death of Ed this morning for diplomacy to prevail in the Middle East and the release of hostages, humanitarian aid to be released in Gaza and an end to warfare. For the victims and survivors of a brutal attack in Australia. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord, the peace of the risen Christ be with you all. Let us share a sign of God's peace. At this time, you may be seated, and our, our acolytes will pass for our fi the plates for our financial offerings as our choir offers a musical offering.
Please stand as you're able. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. From us to your witnesses in, in the world, form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. of all things and all peoples you have made yourself known in Jesus of Nazareth in compassion for the outcast forgiveness for the fallen hope for the poor and hungry and his life poured out for others and broken and rejection and disdain you have made yourself known on his last night with them Jesus gathered his friends around the dinner table in beloved community he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to each one of them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup of wine and said, This cup is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Come to us, Spirit of our Lord of love, and let the bread and wine before us bear your life to our life. Nourish us with his vision of hope and unite us in one body of peace. You are our life. You are our hope. You are our peace. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set and all is ready. Come to the table. You may be seated. For those of you at home, please hear these words for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. For those here in person, Jackie will direct you forward and you may either kneel or stand around the communion table. I will place a wafer in your hand, and that also I also have gluten-free wafers. And we have a tray that has red grape juice or white wine. You may take a cup and consume it before placing it into the empty tray and returning to your seats. Come to the table. All are welcome. <laughs>
shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. You may be seated, and I'm going to invite Mark Morgan, one of our pilgrims on our trip to Zimbabwe, to come forward. Can you hear me? So I'm with a group of people from Faith, there are 16 of us that are going to Zimbabwe in about four weeks or four and a half weeks from now. Um, and you may have noticed that we've been, we've been talking about it a bit this week in the weekly bulletin out on the, on the video screen outside, we have a little thing about raising the roof. So we've been doing things for, with the group from Zimbabwe, from Zimbabwe with Ramson and Anasu for many years now. And uh, this is going to be a pretty big thing. We're going to build a children's center, a youth center. We're going to build a youth center. And um, it's for 300 children in the village. He's already, Ramson, he's been over there. He's already started the work. And we've, through contributions that people have given us in the church, we've been able to put up a, enough materials to get most of it up. But to raise the roof is, is actually a literal, literal thing. We still need money to put the roof on the facility. We think we need about $1,500. Um, we're giving a number of different ways that you can give. There's a QR code out on the video display screen. There's some envelopes out there. There's online, our online contribution. You can sign up there. So we're hoping that you can um, find a way to, to do that. I just wanted to make a, we're going to have different people talking. I'm going to give a little bit of my own perspective. I mean, I met Ramson and Anasu probably just about when we started coming back to the church over 15 years ago. And we, over the years, we've had the, Sandy and I have had a great time of being able to meet them and their family, their two kids, even Ramson's mom and, and brother. And we, we really have enjoyed the, their presence. So we're definitely looking forward to being in the village, meeting all the people that he, uh, he's associated with, that he grew up with, and people that have populated the village since he's been there, and uh, just getting to experience the whole thing and uh, learn what it's all about, and maybe we'll get some people on the side and get the real scoop about Ramson that we can, <laughs> we can bring back and tell you guys. So thanks, and hopefully you can uh, you know, find it. Thank you, Mark. I invite you to stand and receive the blessing. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Let us sing number 713 in your red hymnals, O God of every nation.
announcements. First of all, thank you so much for Samantha Printable for serving again. And I hope that you saw the wonderful news that we have hired our new director of traditional music. DJ Cleavinger will be here next week. Many thanks to Jeannie Lackey, who was in charge of the search team, Beth Heltmeyer, and Don Colford, who helped us with the choir through these many, many more months than we anticipated. So, so thank you. I have to say, it was fun getting to know the choir better. Thank you for that. But I miss my Thursday night movie nights. So. <laughs> A couple of announcements, things that are happening. On Wednesday is Pub Spirituality at 6.30 at Palmer's Restaurant and Tavern. We're gonna talk about the, the sacredness of nature. Um, so a conversation about that. Also, um, on Thursday, we're going to Kitty's for our lunch bunch. So anybody is welcome to join us. I know, Roberta, that's your home base, I think. So <laughs> hope that anybody can join us at 11.30 this Thursday. Other announcements. One more fellowship opportunity. So the men's fellowship uh, is having breakfast this coming Saturday at uh, 730 here at church. Uh, we'll talk, actually, we'll get an update on, on uh, Phil Leavo and uh, uh, just have a time to share each other and be seen. Thanks. Caroline D'Agostino and Suzanne Newman have been doing it for many, many years, but we want to get more people involved, and, and I hear they will be revealing some secrets to us, so you don't want to miss it. Um, this is an opportunity for, for men and women, um, doesn't matter. Uh, second announcement is that Abby is looking for more uh, bell ringers. We'll be playing in church on June 9th, and you need to make, um, I think, three of the uh, rehearsals before that. So if you wanted to play handbells, this is your chance. Hi, I'm Chris Hayward, uh, part of the RIC committee, and I'm just highlighting the fact that Pastor Cliff Gerber is here with us today. He's a retired ELCA pastor, and I think he's going to give us a little perspective on how the um, involvement of the Synod in the um, RIC type of process started and his own personal journey. So come to the um, sessions in the Sunday School Room after each service. Thank you. Uh, so Lisa Yonicki asked me to come up and uh, remind everybody next Sunday during Connection Time we're all going to get together who's Everyone wants to be involved with VBS. Um, I've seen some of the props and what's behind the scenes, uh, so we'd love to have you come along. And also next Sunday begins the three sessions on the book Breathing Underwater by Richard Rohr that Pastor Denny Hacker is going to be leading. Remember we had to postpone it during Lent, so hopefully you still have the book in hand and can be part of the conversation. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad. Thank you. Thank you.